Welcome back, everyone. We're on our third episode of answering commonly asked power station questions, hopefully in easy to digest video form. And in today's installment, we're going to establish just what the term flat means regarding the power station and whether or not it even really applies. Okay, so in the sonic and audio world, the term flat normally refers to settings on your gear that neither mask or exaggerate any frequencies. And if you're just buying a power station fresh for the first time and you're putting it in your chain, uh, it's not unreasonable to think that you're wondering, you know, what are the settings to make sure that I'm not introducing unnecessary coloration into my tone or messing up the good thing that I had going before I bought my new shiny box of happiness. And so we don't have any new tech to perform on this topic this week, but we do have Steve coming on. And I think he does a really good job of not only explaining uh, his answer for the overarching question, but uh, also in <laughs> explaining why he's saying what he's saying, given the fact that the power station is comprised of, you know, a few different major components with the reactive load and the tube power section and the frequency controls and so on and so forth. So we're gonna let Steve do the heavy lifting here. So without further ado, Here's Mr. Stephen Michael Fryett. Uh Well, it's a question that we get asked a lot. Where is flat? What is the flat setting? Um, the fact that the switches say flat on them is misleading. It's the, the, it's the simplest way to describe the fact that in those positions, they're not reactive. So spelling out not reactive would look kind of silly on there. So, all right, how do we convey that the reactive load is not being reactive at some point? And the simplest way we could come up with to express that was to say it's flat, meaning that the reactive load at the high frequencies or at the low frequencies is not being accentuated by the reactive load because the reactive part of the load is turned off. So the load is a combination of reactive components and resistive components. I've seen some people say, oh, well, I thought it was a reactive load, but it's got resistors in it. Well, all reactive loads have resistors in them. A reactive load is a combination of resistors and capacitors, inductors, in other words, reactive components. So what these switches do is they progressively add in more of the reactive component to the sound. So the reactive behavior is user adjustable by using these switches. So that takes care of the flat part of the question over here. What about over here? Um, in, a, in a power amp, you have a frequency response and you like it to be a ruler flat line except way out in the ex ends of the frequency response range where your ears stop working, 20 kilohertz on the top end, 20 hertz on the bottom end. So you'll see this flat line and way out at the ends they drop off because that's where the frequency response tapers off because you don't hear those frequencies anyway so there's no reason for the amp to be able to produce them. So in that sense the presence of contempt controls all, all the way to zero are going to give you a typical linear power amp behavior which doesn't necessarily mean flat. And why that is, is because the perception of flatness is determined by the behavior of the user's ears and of the cabinet they're plugging it into. And that's what makes the power stations unique uh, among um, active reamping devices. The units that have solid state power amps tend to control the speaker behavior so that the speakers stay flatter. You hear them as flatter because the power amp is forcing the speakers to stay more linear. On a tube power amplifier, the speakers are allowed to breathe more and accentuate lows and highs more. So, and the louder you play affects how much reactive behavior the speaker and the power amp engage in together regardless of where the load is set. So we got two different things going on here. How the reactive load behaves when it's in the reactive mode, when it's not set to flat, and how the power amp behaves with respect to whatever cabinet you're plugged into, and that's gonna be different for every cab that you're plugged into. Whether it's just different because it's a, one cab is 16 and the other is eight, or whether one is a 412 and the other is a 212, or one is a 412 and one's a 112, or one's a high efficiency speaker and one's a low efficiency speaker. So all of those things affect how you perceive 
linearity or flatness or whatever you call flat. And especially the volume because your ear's behavior changes at different volumes. So at different volumes, you're gonna perceive it as being flatter down low or flatter up high. Just depends on your ears. So there isn't really technically a flat. There is the least active of the presence and depth controls. You could call that flat. Just if we look at it on an audio analyzer, you'll see that it isn't 100% flat. But if we turn the presence and depth up, you'll see the low frequencies and high frequencies get em emphasized. And there's a setting where you could probably find with the speakers that you're using that it's more linear out in the extreme ends of the frequency range, but that doesn't necessarily be mean it's flat either because it's how your ears are hearing it whether or not you're going to perceive that as flat so there technically is no flat that's why we say set it where it sounds good to you set it where it feels good set it where it sounds right that's right doesn't matter whether it's flat or not it matters only is it working for you does it sound right does it sound familiar does it match your expectations that's really the the goal that's what you're trying to accomplish and that's why whenever somebody says i want the one that's flatter well they're they both re react the same way just at different volumes and different power output levels all right so there you have it flat truly is in the ear of the beholder yeah! i guess i deserve that so uh, I'm gonna get out of here, but if you like this, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. And if you don't, I don't blame you because this is pretty nerdy stuff. Anyway, my work is done. I'm out of here. Mm -hmm.